Welcome to another episode of What is New in Asana. This is your September 2023 edition. And like Asana does, they have snuck in some new updates. If you are checking the release notes like I do, uh, you might not have even seen this one. They haven't updated it officially yet, but they're rolling it out to certain spaces. And so I'm going to be showing you three new updates today. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Marquis. I am a Asana expert and process consultant, and I make videos like these to help you use Asana better. So today we're going to be looking at three new features. Firstly, we've got the new uh, percentage allocation inside of our workload portfolio. So you have to have a business or above plan to be looking at that. Um, we have a new Gantt view as well, not to be confused with the timeline view that already exists. I'm going to be drawing some comparisons to those, looking at baselining, a new feature that was also snuck in there. And then the third thing we're going to be looking at is the new custom rule builder. And so let's get into the demo. So the first thing I'm going to be looking at here is, again, the new percentage allocation. And so, again, you need to have the business plan to look at this. But if we go to our portfolio, I've just brought in some dummy projects here and added some due dates. And if you go over to the workload, traditionally, we would have had to set an effort for this. So the default, as we know, is simply task count for any of our workload options here. But we, if we add the effort, we were being asked previously to set it to estimated time. And in our projects, it would then add the estimated time field to our projects. And we'd have to fill in that information to get our team's workload capacity. But by popular demand um, or by popular request, um, Asana has added the new percentage allocation feature. So we're going to take a look at that here. So once I go next, um, as it does at the portfolio level, it's going to ask me to add those fields to um, my projects. So I'm going to add that effort right there. Let's just assume we want everyone to be working 100% uh, of the time. Actually, let's just set it down to 80%. Why not? And like we do for estimated hours, we can change that for the individuals. And so let's go and set that capacity across the board. There it is. As you can see, there's no information. We're going to have to go and give it some information. So I'm going to go to those projects that I've already set up. And then if we scroll over to the right, we're going to see the percent. Oh, there it is right there. Percent allocation added into our project. So I'm going to move this one over beside estimated time. And then we can take a look. And if I was the individual working on this task, so let's just, let's incomplete these for a second here so I can adjust my time. So uh, set up A-B test landing pages. You know, if we were doing a sprint or, you know, if we had time that we wanted to uh, update for the, the week or the month. And that's one thing I'll actually show you. Let's go back to portfolio for a second. So once we go into the workload, um, you can set the um, capacity for, this is also an, another quick update, set the capacity for, for days, weeks, months, or so on. So when you look at it on this view, which I'll fill it in a second here, we're going to see that we can look at our daily capacity or our weekly capacity, depending on what the view looks like right here. So really cool update. So let's just add in some information. So we can pull in something for Asana. So I'm going to say that this here is 5% my time, 10%, 20%, 15%. When I get to the portfolio, I'll change these due dates. Um, that's not me. Let's change that one. And there we go. I'll incomplete these as well. Maybe we'll just speed this part up of the video. Great, so let's go back to our, up to our portfolio. Let's see what this looks like now. We go into our workload. And then there we go. So now we can see if we look at it, we've got this daily capacity of 80%, right? Um, and then we've got our, our tasks that are assigned to us. And so not super helpful just yet. Let's just slip some of these around in time. So we can change what these dates look like. There we go, let's just move some of them around really quickly. So you kind of get the picture, right? So now we can start to see, okay, how are these tasks really um, allocating? 
how are we really allocating our, our time in these tasks that we're completing, right? So versus looking at, you know, the time allocation, we can now see what the percentage looks like. And then again, we can change the view. So we can look at days large and see that same daily capacity. Or we can zoom out, we can look at weeks now, and we can see what our weekly capacity is and how those tasks um, add up to our weekly capacity now. And then we can go in and change the view to months large, medium, or small. I really love that update. It's so helpful. So we can get really granular in the information that we're looking at inside of Asana. So good job, Asana. Great little update there. Try out the new percentage allocation. The next one we're going to look at is the Gantt versus Timeline options. And so when I saw this, I got really excited and I thought, oh, that means that there's no more timeline, but we still have the timeline inside of Asana. So here it is right here. We are familiar with the timeline already, and it allows us to, if we're planning a project, plan it really quickly. And so we can do the same thing like we just did in the portfolio. We can move things around, slip them in time. We can change them you know, to different sections, open up the task detail, and make changes there as well. But um, like I'm sure you're aware, or maybe you're not, so this is the first time you're, you're seeing this update, we can add new tabs now. So we can add custom views, we can rename these views, we can add emojis, and it, it's great. Lots of great updates here. But if we go and we add a Gantt option, now you can see, let's zoom out of this and let's move this left. Can I click and drag? Yes, I can. Beautiful. So we have this timeline now. We're comparing, you know, our to-do section, let's say. And then we switch over to our, our Gantt now. It looks a little bit different. So rather than the, the blocks here um, on our Gantt chart being named what the task is, we have this nice list right here underneath our section. We can close it up or expand it if we need to. We can see the date range as well. So if we did need to change any of these and, and move them around, we can do that. And then we can see exactly what the duration of that is as well. So this is a really cool feature to get a really quick view into the progress of your task, the status of them, the, the timeline. And with reporting becoming more and more robust, we can now report a lot more on the duration um, and how long things are, are, are going past the, the due date. So what the slippage looks like, what tasks are lagging. Um, and so it's just a really nice option. Now, my, my initial thoughts were, again, Hey, we have Gantt now. This is what it. This is what timeline should have always been, in my opinion, right? So I wonder now if Asana is going to be doing away with the timeline. Um, we'll, we'll see kind of what happens. But if you found another use case for this, or you have some impressions on how you know Asana could have made this better, or where they're going with it, um, please let me know. But this, um, I think, is a really cool step in the right direction, and is going to you know allow a lot of people to start planning better and visualizing better, especially for project managers, um, to be able to see what's going on. One quick update that you might have missed if you're not familiar with the new Gantt option is right over here, you have Gantt options. And so we already know that, you know, with dependencies, you can, you know, consume the buffer, maintain the buffer. We have weekend awareness. Great. But now um, you could always highlight the critical path, but you can now add baselines. So if you're not familiar with what baselining is, it's a, it's a project management approach where you can take a snapshot of where a project is at, you know, in time, um, taking into account laggers and slippage versus where the project started. And so you can take snapshots of the project and then compare that to different points in time over the project to understand, you know, how efficient we were in our processes, um, in our projects, I should say. So let's say we were managing this project and changes were happening over time. We could, you know, compare a baseline um, at this point in time versus where we were at at that point in time. So obviously there's no real historical data here, but if we wanted to take a snapshot and see what that project looked like, we can now um, see that information you know, really, really quickly and see how our projects are then updating. So as we get into our projects and as we're actually making those changes and changing not only the task durations, but the project um, overview or the whole project duration, we can see those updates. And what's really cool, um, I was talking to our, our lead engineer yesterday and they were letting us know that we can now 
Um, I mean, we could have always done this, but with the new baseline feature, we can export this information and it can be imported into something like Tableau or Power BI. So you can then compare uh, results on a you know really well-defined dashboard as well. And or you can export it to a CSV through the API. And so it's a really cool way where if you do need to have this information to measure project slippage, and changes uh, along the way, you can you can compare those baselines. So really cool update for Asana. Now the third option I'm going to show you, I haven't actually looked at it yet. So what I'm going to be doing right now is reacting to it um, in real time. I I've seen it, but I haven't actually dug into it yet. So I'm going to be learning it as you are learning it. You're going to see me probably struggle through it. Hopefully not struggle through it. Hopefully it's really intuitive. Let's go to customize, go to rule. All right, let's add that rule. Um, if you haven't done this yet, it will show you the, the traditional rule builder, and then it will ask you to update to the new rule builder if you haven't done so already. And so what this is allowing us to do now, similar to the, the workload builder, not workload, workflow builder, um, is to get a little bit more dynamic with our rules. And now it seems like for the first time, again, I haven't actually done this yet, um, we can do if and statements for the first time. So I'm gonna try it out. Let me just back out for a second just to remind myself what we actually have inside of this project. So we've got a couple assignees, great, we've got some due dates. We've got agile status and approval status. I gotta remember those. Um, and then we've got percentage allocation. So agile status and approval status. Okay, let's just keep that in mind as I'm building here. Check if um, task is in section, okay, to do. And then also check if agile status is uh, to do. And then let's see if I can do one more. Check if... Again, I have not done this before, I promise you. Um, let's see if the assignee is me, do this. Um, we want to change the due date to, let's say 30 days. Um, and then I wanna do one more thing. Um, I wanna move to the section, um, I don't know, in progress. And let's see what else we can do. What was the last option we had? Approval status. So let's say, uh, let's change it to information needed just for fun. So it seems like we're just like creating some more logic here. Whereas before we'd had to have built multiple rules to maybe do this, we can just think through it more logically and get it to check. I love this check if feature, right? Like before we just had the actions and then we would select when all of these actions or when any of these actions apply. Now we can just have branches where or stack it basically where it's like or 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 we can you know delete it and just have one we want to check if this is happening this okay this is actually kind of cool uh, it just hit me for a second i've been wanting this for so long so i'm gonna have to play with this some more but check if any of these conditions are met and if they're not then do this thing um I, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. I wonder, I was trying to do this. I wonder if you can then branch off of like one of these specifically. It looks like all these conditions have to be met. But again, if you build the logic in the right way, let's just publish this rule um, and let's see what happens. So let's create a new task. Um, let's just add a task. Task two. Where did it go? Did I just do that? Um, actual time agile status is to to do. Let's see, is it working? Oh, it might be working because I asked it to create a task. There it is, it's jumping back down to in progress. Okay, so it's working and then it moved my task ahead 30 days. Okay, that's kind of cool. So obviously I have to play around with this um, quite a bit more, but I'm really excited for this feature. Let me know what you think. If you found any of this helpful or insightful and you have started playing with this new rule builder or with the Gantt chart versus timeline, if you have any opinions, leave a comment. I love reading the comments um, and let me know what you think. But again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.